What's going on everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you a video about some of the games I would like to hear from in 2024. With that in mind, these are games that do not have an official release date really, but are likely, I would say, to release between 2024 and 2025. Meaning that there is a chance we will actually learn more about them, albeit a vague one, as these games are in active development, which is often fraught with things like delays, complications, etc., and nothing is ever final until it is in your hands after all. So with that said, many of these games have been announced for quite some time, we know they are being worked on, and in many ways I'd say they are games I am excited for in some fashion or another, but the problem is I simply either don't know enough about them to really cement that feeling, alongside the fact that they just don't have release dates. So with all of that said, let's dive into this, and first up, I would say we have the biggest name on this list, which is Dragon Age Dreadwolf. Now, unlike the others, this one is almost a guarantee we'll hear something about it in 2024 because they have said as much. This game is apparently getting a full big reveal this summer, and while of course not guaranteed, I think it is likely they will also give a release date at that time. Given that this game has been in development for a significant period, has been the subjects of leaks and other various dramas. When it comes to Dragon Age Dreadwolf, I think Bioware is in for a very uphill battle against public perception in many ways, that the game really needs to be great to overcome. Now, personally, I like to withhold judgment about these things until I have something in my hands and I'm playing it for myself. Then I'll decide how I feel about it. But I also think it would be naive to ignore the broader picture around any given release, which is honestly a big part of my job as a games reviewer. So while I genuinely hope every game I play is good, including Dreadwolf, Bioware's reputation isn't exactly at an all-time high, thanks to, I would say, say, a significant churn in manpower, the leaks, like I mentioned, already giving people some idea of gameplay, not that I would go into that personally, but it is out there, and the simple fact that many of Bioware's releases over the past several years have not been warmly received, which I think is made even more complicated by a personal opinion of mine about the Dragon Age series, which is that while I love the world building, all three of the main games for the series so far, Origins 2 and Inquisition, are all very different titles, and the people who enjoy those games Games like them each for individual reasons. For instance, I really enjoy the cast of characters in Dragon Age 2, but it's my least favorite in every other regard. And when you do things like that, have these big focus shifts in between mainline entries of a game, you're going to run up against a, I would say, skewed player expectation in terms of who liked what from which game, which makes it increasingly difficult to please everyone, which was never going to happen to begin with. So you now have these fractured groups of people who all want wanted something different from your game. And I think because of all those reasons, Dreadwolf, pretty much regardless of what they do or how they approach it, is going to be a contentious title. I am nonetheless looking forward to news on it, and I hope it manages to be interesting. Because like I said, I'll withhold my own personal judgment until it's in my hands and I'm playing it. Moving right along, we next up have a game from In Exile Entertainment, which is Clockwork Revolution, a steampunk industrial revolution style game from one of my favorite developers, no less. Clockwork Revolution is going to be about bending time around an area or a city more specifically known as Avalon, which is going to be full of choice and consequence related to the time meddling you're going to be partaking in, which is all well and good. Though, while many people, I think just looking at this thing, immediately evoked feelings of the Bioshock series, for me and afterwards, it was stated that this is much more in line with a previous release from Troika, which is Arcanum though obviously a bit different, as that was an isometric CRPG, and this is a first-person RPG. However, nonetheless, the game does look really promising. I think it has a lot of cool things going for it, but as it stands, it is rumored to have a late 2024 or 2025 release somewhere in there, so I'm hoping we learn more about it soon, but we shall see. Moving right along, the next game I'd like to learn more about is South of Midnight. From the developers of We Happy Few, this particular game will be a third-person action adventure set in the American Deep South. We will be playing as a woman known as Hazel, who explores the mythos and encounters
encounters of Southern folklore as she attempts to deal with their spirits and restore bonds, etc., as she confronts and deals with these things. Now, this game interests me for a few reasons. Most prominently, I would say the art style is something that really stands out to me personally, though the second one is... Perhaps a little bit silly, but those who watch the channel regularly might know that I'm from the American South, and I'm honestly a sucker for games that take place around where I live, or have lived even, so I'm very curious to see how this game approaches all those things, if only to see if they can do the place justice. In any event though, South of Midnight looks really cool, and is another game that has like a vague rumor situation around 2024, 2025, so... I'm hoping maybe towards the middle of the year we learn more about it, as it certainly has my interest. Now, moving right along to number four, however, we have Judas, a title from Ghost Story Games, which is notable because it is with Ken Levine, who is the director of Bioshock, Bioshock Infinite, and System Shock 2, for instance. Meaning that, in addition to its announcement, which showed off all sorts of elements that looked like those games, it's likely to be a spiritual successor of sorts to those titles, but of course, with a few nuances that make it a bit different. In this case, we play as someone named Judas, traveling aboard a disintegrating starship who has to make deals or perhaps break them with potential allies or enemies along the way, which is an interesting enough premise. So I think for me, given that I just recently played through the entire Bioshock series this past year, I'm very curious to see if Judas can move those gameplay elements forward in any way, because I think its ability to actually do that and not just kind of get caught up in the tried and true is what is going to determine this game's overall success. But at face value, it does look pretty interesting. Now, moving along to our final entry, we have Greedfall 2 from Spiders. Spiders was an indie dev for a long time, but is now owned by Nacon. They are behind games like the Technomancer, Mars Warlogs of Orcs and Men, more recently Steel Rising, and of course Greedfall itself. Now Greedfall, which is a game that released back in 2019, was hands down Spiders' biggest success. They've made a lot of, I think, really cool games, but were ultimately quite niche. Technomancer was a personal favorite, for instance. But Greedfall was so successful that it prompted Spiders to change its approach to things. They normally didn't really do DLC or things like sequels, both of which they will have done for Greedfall itself. A DLC already released for it, and Greedfall 2 is supposed to be releasing in 2024, though we don't have too many details on the what or the how outside of the game's initial announcement. Now, that said, where Greedfall put us in the role of colonizers to an island of Tirfredi, which could lead to a cure to a mysterious illness that plagued the homeland. Now, the sequel is going to be kind of the opposite. You'll be someone native to the island of Tirfredi, heading out to the mainland, though it is technically a prequel, as it is set to take place three years before the first game. Now, as for... This game's success or not, I think Greedfall was a really fun but janky experience. It stumbled in a few places that I think with some more time and care given to it, it could really shine, which is what I'm hoping they do for Greedfall 2. If they can just take the core of what worked in Greedfall, smooth out some of those systems so they feel a little more polished and a little less janky, then I think the game could be something really special, as the first game was a ton of fun. But that is pretty much going to do it for this video. There's been some games that as we begin our journey into 2024 and what it holds for the gaming industry, I would certainly like to hear from personally. These are games that I have my eye on alongside other games with more official release dates, which a little closer to January, I will likely go over the full list of what I'm planning on reviewing, etc., at least as we move into the year before announcements and things like that start rolling out. Because while I doubt we'll see something like 2023 for at least a few years, there is still a lot of cool stuff coming, and I'm excited to share it with you guys. In the meantime, though, I hope you enjoyed this video, hope it put some games on your radar at least, or reminded you they exist, maybe, or I suppose will exist. But at any rate, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz, but but regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.